So we've, we've got uh, Janine Prosser, who's one of our product specialists for um, finance, who's going to take you through um, the finance module that we have at the moment and a look at what the future holds and our own plans for um, taking that to a full uh, map finance project. Uh, before I hand over to Janine, I'm also going to do a, a little bit of a, a sales pitch that if any of you joining us today, whether on your Broncom um, family members at the moment, whether you're using something else, if you would like to join us as a development partner for finance and help shape um, the product, then we're more than happy to talk to you. Your input would be very, very welcome. And that actually extends to the other products that we have as well. So if anybody is interested in being a development partner for um, our HR plans, our assessment product, then again, do feel free to get in touch, but especially so if you're interested in finance. So with that, Janine, I'll hand yeah. it to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, let me take over the screen share. Okay, can you now see my screen okay? Yeah. Oh, my slides are wonderful. So, uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, hi, everybody. My name's Janine. I am the pre-sales business development lead for the BombCom Finance software. Um, what's going to happen is today I'm going to go through and give you a demonstration about our um, current finance software. And then my colleague, Martin, um, is going to talk to you about what developments we have got in place with regard to the map finance uh, that is being launched in September. So just to give you a bit of a background about myself, I've worked for Boncom for, um, for just over a year now. Um, prior to that, I worked in a school using a different finance package. So I'd been there several years um, and then we went to explore both MIS and finance packages. Um, and I was, it was my job to be in charge of that procurement process. Um, and so we went out and looked at other providers and we chose to... Um, and go along with uh, Broncom. Um, predominantly, the link between the MIS and the um, finance was definitely something that, that really was a, a key selling point for us. Um, I have then obviously sat where you guys have sat and been through that transition process. So um, not only did we transfer, we did our MIS and finance at the same time. Um, and so I went through the process of getting a finance system set up in a school. Um, and then worked with the finance within a school. So what I'm going to be talking to you today is very much the day-to-day -day finance processing um, that members in your school's office teams will be using. Um, and then the more high level in terms of reporting and information that you need to report at, um, at that level will, will be covered by, by what Martin is going to show you. Just as a bit of an overview, I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration on the system in a minute. So I'm going to show you exactly um, the different parts of the system and some of the key aspects that I liked. Um, as highlights, it is cloud based. Um, so you don't need to have access to a server and you can access it from anywhere. One of the things that we found really beneficial in our school was the fact that we were able to log on wherever we were. We didn't have to wait for um, a central hosting Citrix desktop to load. There was invariably problems with that. It was quicker. And obviously, I was still working in a school during the first lockdown. I could do all of my job role um, remotely from home. Everything that, that I could do, there are um, different places within the system that you can, all those paper trail aspects, so purchase orders, invoices, bank statements, all of those kind of day-to-day -day items you could attach directly to the system, which meant remote working was a lot easier. Um, there's the ability to roll down through roles and permissions to access to the system, which obviously, again, can reduce your need for paper trails. So rather than having to get pieces of paper signed because, uh, you know, for order purchase orders or authority levels, you can actually set that up. And I can give you a brief example of that when we look at the system shortly of how um, that goes through. What that does do is obviously negates those pieces of paper landing on your desk. If you've ever worked in a school office, you can sometimes drown under the amount of paper that uh, lands in your on your um, desk so it stops things getting missed um, and it does allow that flexibility if you want working in the same location to manage roles um, and permissions that way 
One of the things I really liked and the fact that it is cloud based is that you can have multiple pages up at once. So you no longer have to shut down the system if another inquiry comes in. Again, if you're working in the school office, there's invariably that somebody comes to the office with a nosebleed or has been sick and you have to ring up or someone's forgotten their lunch. There's always messages, the phone goes. What I like is you can have lots of different tabs. You can be in the middle of doing your um, monthly bank reconciliation, have to then go and take a phone call because you've got to um, you know, speak to a parent about something you can just open up a duplicate tab do that and you won't lose the work that you're on the old system that i used to use i was forever having to shut things down and come out and move into the different system the system is designed and you'll see in a minute when i show you it to be easy to use for existing finance users so the terminology and the process are similar to the majority of the finance systems out there so all of your um purchasing, uh, you know, so purchase orders, invoices, payment processing, all of the terminology is kept the same. So that, it, you know, existing users of a finance system should be able to make the transfer over to Broncom very easily. Um, the training is, uh, depending on obviously the, the different roles, um, we split the training up into different parts. So um, sort of finance managers and then some based on those who were using um, accounts payable. So any of your purchasing side of things, and then again, separate ones for um, accounts receivable, any invoices that you raise. Um, there are also, um, we try and put them on at times that are relevant through the year. So for example, all our customers that come on board, we will do a routine training with them just before they're due to do their first month end processes so that we can, you know, there's no point in training you in that six weeks before you're gonna need it. Um, there's a full onboarding process with support at transition and access to a help desk and, or accredited support centres, depending on which route you choose to go down in that. And the system, as you'll see, is intuitively built. So I'm hoping the technology isn't going to fail me here. And this is going to link me nicely to the system. So I appreciate this is probably quite small on, and um, I'll just make my screen a little bit bigger. Um, for you guys uh, on my laptop, but this is the uh, finance homepage. So this was where I spent a lot of my time when I was in the school setting, um, going through the various different aspects of the system. Now, one of the things I said I was gonna show you before we get started into kind of what the system does is the roles and permissions. So these again are gonna be streamlined as part of the Map Finance, I'm sure Martin will talk about this, but um, in terms of you can make these roles specific, but you can actually allocate different roles. So I've got a finance office role here, but it could be that you can actually manage roles and permissions to even individual kind of capabilities if you needed to. So you'll see in here, this is how, you know, how far you can drill down. So these are all of the different functions. So these are some of the setup ones. Down here, we've got accounts payable. So add in supplier details, purchase orders, et cetera. And you've got the option within here to say whether a person can access it, can create new, edit existing um, items in there, delete and save. So you can really bring that down. So things like, for example, invoices, you might have somebody within your office who you want to have the ability to add um, invoices onto the system but not approve them. That needs to be done at another level of authority. And then you can have, say, a budget holder role and add those on. So nice and straightforward in terms of, um, you know, allocating permissions correctly to the right people. What you've got then in the system is a general overview of the types of uh aspects of the, the role that you can do. So accounts payable is where you will go through and put any of your suppliers on. Um, everything is really intuitive. It's really easy to get information out of the system. So if we look, for example, at the suppliers, if you need to pull information without even having to run reports, you can just pull straight away a CSV directly out of the system and get that information. All of them have got these really useful um, tables on that you can sort into ascending or descending order. And when you look at chart of accounts inquiry, that's quite useful in terms of tell me what my top 10 budgets are that I overspent. And your search function is really good. It can pick up um, any of the details in here. So it could pick up, pick up account numbers, it could pick up postcode, it could pick up names. So it's really useful in that respect. On a day-to-day -day basis, your uh, members of staff in the school office will be able to put purchase orders on, invoices on. As a, from an authority level, you can obviously go in and either individually authorise or 
um, invoices or purchase orders, or you have actually got the ability to do that in bulk as well. So there are filters on the left hand side where you can come into your invoices, for example, you can have a look at which are unauthorized. And then from here, you can either select individual ones to authorize or select all and then authorize or you can go into each one individually and from that screen you're able to authorize it here from this section here we can support backs payments we can support um check runs we can support car payments so if you've got um we've got quite a lot of schools who've got credit cards set up and we can allow for those payments to be made um, via the card as well in terms of account receivable, if you are raising invoices, most of the items that you will probably be charging your parents for um, will be done through the MIS side of things, from, through our My Child at School, or you may have a similar um, online payment portal, Parent Pay, um, Wise Pay, there's a couple of other ones out there. In terms of the My Child at School, if you do use the My Child at School, we have got a system in here where you can actually map across your relevant products to um, your cost centers and your ledger codes. And once you've done that, what that will do is when you go in each week with your back transfer report that comes out um, each week with the money that goes into the account, you can simply match the dates from processing the payments and that will then create an unposted journal ready for you to review and post. So starting to make life slightly easier. It's all joined up. If you set up a customer in accounts receivable that is a parent for, um, if you are raising an invoice for something that's not going through my child at school, it will pull through all of their contact details so you don't have to duplicate work in that respect. If you update their telephone number in the contact details in the MIS, it will update it for you. We've got the options with budgeting, not only to add your budgets manually, but also within cost center allocation, we've now got the facility to import those as well. So um, you've got the ability in here to, um, we've got some spreadsheet templates that you can use to import those across. In terms of staffing, one of the major benefits of it all being linked up and joined is that your staffing details are already in the system. It's a case then that you map across your pay scales in use to your relevant cost centers, ledger codes and funds as done in here. And that will pull through all of the contract information to create your salary projections, which you can then look at um, at either whole school level, um, uh, pay scale level, so main scale teachers, for example, or you could then look at that um, at individual level. If you want to go and change anything in relation to a staff contract, again, it's all linked up, it's all joined. You would come into here, you would select staff contract, it would pull that through. Again, it's linked to the MIS. Any contracts that you update in here will automatically update your salary projections, either if you're already in the screen, you just have to refresh it. Otherwise, next time you load the screen, these automatically filter into your commitments into the chart of accounts. And we've now got the facility to do automatic reconciliations, not only on pay reconciliations, but also on journals and um invoices so if you have got schools and i know obviously a lot of mats run their their systems in slightly different ways so if you've got them that almost process it a bit like the old central payments it's all done through a via a central hub that can be done and then filtered back through um, or obviously some of the amendments that you're going to be showing soon you can actually have it all added at school level and then filtered across there's the ability to run salary calculators so you can run your hypothetical situations as well. So if X person leaves and Y person's hours increase, what impact is that gonna have on my budget? And you'll be able to pull those details. You can see right up here, I've got my variance and it's based on the information that's pulled through from these scenarios down here. And whoever you highlight, it's their details then that comes across. So nice and easy to use. In terms of the chart of accounts inquiry, it's really easy to use. There's some really nice things in here, such as journal browsers. So if you are looking for something that is a particular transaction amount, a particular um, 
uh, invoice number, something along those lines. This will pull through anything from either um, your general ledger, so your journals, your invoices, um, even petty cash staffing. You can search, so if I'm looking for an amount that's 1,307, I can start typing that in, it pulls through. Again, you've got these grid actions here to pull that information out of the system if you want to. Um, you can also search, um, you know, by description, Viking Go resources, etc. Anything I want to have a look at on here is drill downable. So I can double click on it, it will open up the journal. I can also click on it again and it will take me directly to that particular transaction in the system. It's opened it up in a new tab so I can focus on that. In terms of um, the chart of accounts, as I said, you've got these ability to order. So if I quickly wanted to see what my top 10 budgets that were overspent are, then I can come into here and I can order in um, descending order for my spend against budget. So if I just do that along here, then I can quite quickly see with the nice color code in here, these are my top you know, few budgets that are overspent. So I can go in and have a look at any of those on here. You have also got options. So the bank statement is quite a nice touch in here. But if you have a look, go and look at your bank statement. If you're wanting to find out what bank statement something's reconciled, you can see in here, you've got your statement. So again, I can have a look at this um, invoice if I want to. If I double click on that, it will drill through, take me directly to the invoice but I've also got the option in here to highlight it from here and look at the statement as well. So it will then pull through and it will give me not only the invoice, which is loading on this screen here, um, that I can see through here. So that's my payment details. And then I can actually go on and open the invoice, but I've also got my bank statement here as well. So it's pulled through and I can see exactly what it is going forward. Um, we have all the regular items you would need in terms of monthly returns. You'll see looking from the finance homepage, if I just go back to that. Um, that we've got the option also to add third party exports. So if there are particular reports that you need in certain formats, then you're, we're able to pull those through um, simply at the click of a button. These are some of the ones that we've worked with our existing customer base at the moment that they require the reports. Otherwise, we've got a lot of standard reports down here that you can see that we can pull through. You can export these into PDF, Word, Excel, and you can schedule them to come. In terms of setup, we've got a very easy to use maintenance section so you can add all your configurations. We've also got in here an equipment register, so um, which you can use to create from your invoices. So each term or each week, depending on how many you do, monthly, you can actually go through all of your invoices and add items to that. The final thing before I hand over to Martin that I just wanted to show you is the DFE chart of accounts. Obviously, this has just been updated with the latest um, upload from the EFSA. Um, these are all the different uh, DFE chart of accounts. There's absolutely thousands of them. So if you are making the move across to that, um, then what we have given you is the option to use the ones that you um, actually use. So um, if I just have a look, for example, at staff costs, you'll see in here, you've got two options. We can create the chart of accounts and you can simply tick, you know, we want to use these ones here. We highlight the ones that we want. We select set the mapping. It will create new ledger codes with these ledger codes in here on the same category. So this will take them as staff details. We just need to map the relevant fund to them. And that will create new ledger codes in your system. Um, alternatively, as you can see up here, if you've already got ledger codes you're currently using for teaching staff pay, for example, then you can actually just map those across to your um, existing ones. So we've got in here, for example, teachers in um pension so if i just search down here for my teaching staff uh pension i can actually just add that up and link that and then from a reporting perspective it will link those that mapping across so for anybody who remembers the old sort of cfr codes at the local authority it works in a similar basis from reporting what I'm going to do now is hand over to my colleague Martin um, and I'm going to be his glamorous assistant so hopefully uh, this will work uh, and he's going to talk you through some of the um, 
additional items that we will be um, improving on the system. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you for that, Janine. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. All right, so uh, I'm the only thing standing between you and your lunch. So always good to get the graveyard shift on, on one of these events, but I assure you, not only what am I going to tell you now is exciting, uh, I'm going to be quite brief as well, but more news to come over the coming months and up until September. So a little bit about myself. My name is Martin Holyoke. I'm a finance consultant here at Broncom. Um, I've spent the last 10 years working in Matt Finance, and a number of different roles and uh, through software as well. I've seen every combination and permutation of setup, uh, very much um, finance focused. Uh, when we talk about small, medium and large mats, they have different meanings to different people. But what I want to reassure you is that with this mat finance product, it incorporates as many of these different variants as possible. Um, in that time, I've, I've pretty much used every single piece of finance software going, uh, some of them good, the bad and, and the proverbial. Uh, and all of, again, all those good and bad experiences uh, I've used to lead on the project. So Janine is going to be my, my clicker. So if, uh, if I randomly tail off and just say the word click, it's usually um, I'm actually speaking to Janine. So try and bear with me here. So if we move into the first slide, what you're going to see here is what I commonly, uh, commonly come across. When a locally maintained school transitions into a, uh, an academy, um, a lot of their systems or an academy trust, uh, whether they're single or multi, what have you, um, there are a conglomerate of different systems. In this case here, this illustration is all the different finance systems. And again, I won't name names, but a lot of them are single databases. At some point, finance professionals will then send that data into a trust and something between alchemy, science and magic happens and your month end reporting gets done governor's report and gets done. This is extremely laborious. There is a, a journey that all, all sort of maps I've seen over the last 10 years go on, which is a centralized or regionalized approach to try and cut this down. You'll be pleased to hear Bromcom Map Finance is not like this at all. If we move on to the next slide, other things, other systems I've seen is a single solution. So this green bar here represents logging in. I then have to pick which academy I'm in where my profit and loss and balance sheet and all the good fun, uh, functionality lives. And then at the bottom, again, I have to log into a single item and pull that all together there. Half as laborious, doesn't give me my full strategic view, and there's something sort of missing in this process. Up in, from 10 o'clock this morning up until that sentence just then, data is a theme, managing your data and using it to make the best strategic decisions. One of the things that we all don't want to be doing is having to mine that data, refine it, then actually going to make some decisions from it. So a setup like this, again, it's siloed. And what we want to do as a trust is pull together, work together, get our data together, and ultimately make the best decisions possible. So this is also not what Matt Finance is. So I'm pleased to announce, and this slide took me a very long time to uh, put together, so uh, bear with me. Here is how we have conceptualized how your data works. Uh, this is a lot like Lauren's slide as well, if you, uh, if you were paying attention to all the different data feeds they've got. This is representative of the same thing. That big circle, that is the database. Bromcom Matt Finance is a single database with all of your data, all of your academies inside of it, consolidating organically and on the go. You don't have to go out of your way and consolidate anything. It's done for you. So whereas the other two require some sort of manual manipulation, all Broncom Finance needs to do is say, show me period one, these sites, and out comes your data. Hopefully, uh, this will again be able to give you the best strategic advantage where, where possible. So that's a little, little bit about how we've approached the data. Other considerations we've included are things like gag pooling. So again, lends itself to that single database approach, single chart of accounts, be they the DFE or our new uh, standard chart of accounts. Um, I'm not going to get into whether the DFE chart of accounts are for you or not. Simply, you have the choice, you decide. But the main thing is, if you want to go with gag pool, and one of the things you need to do is have all of your, your, your sites or your academies um, available at the, sim at the same time. Uh, single or multiple purchase ledgers, your choice. Regional is also a layer that we've included in now. So if you're at the regional level in your sort of tra uh, trusts journey, um, and you've gone north, south, east, west, secondary primaries, red, green, blue, I don't really care what, what, however you've decided to cut up your trust, but if you have, we've now got that layer in there as well. So you can have a single supplier file, so you can get the very best discounts based on uh, buying power, or you can break those into a single academy or a region. 
Um, so moving into some of the wordy parts now, um, why has this happened? Where are we with the project and all those good things? Um, having already established a very good footprint in the MIS space, which is probably what brought the majority of you here, um, we've been asked many, many times, can we do a mat finance product? We know you do a school finance product, but can we do a mat finance product? And here we are. Um, all of our major MAT customers, all, all you good people, um, have asked request, have lent an ear to, uh, and offered us insight into to what it needs. So it's very much um, a, a collaborative uh, sort of process. We're not dictating to the, the market what you should and shouldn't do or should and shouldn't have. You're telling us we're building it. Um, and as, as I said before, uh, the requirements will meet any MAT of any size, of any permutation, any setup, it will fit. So moving into the next part, um, considerations that we've put into some of the features, um, the non-finance part, believe it or not, is where we started. Um, and that is you have a number of stakeholders looking at reports, uh, authorizing orders or acquisitions, whatever it may be. They're not the finance team, but they are finance stakeholders. So it's about making that, that interface as, as easy, as familiar and useful to them as possible, because we know we could basically give you, a, you know, you could run your mat off a spreadsheet if you had to, you know, gun to your head, that could happen. But we don't want that. And we know that if you have finance users or non-finance users, right, sorry, uh, helping or, or interacting with that system, it needs to be appropriate for them. So we've made this, this non-finance user element very, very intuitive. And that will then help uh, with better budget management, better POs, uh, processes and all those good things. Um, the other thing we've taken into account is multi-company. Um, yes, we're aware that mats have trading arms, uh, leisure centers, uh, skits, all sorts of different things. Um, so the Bromcom Mat Finance, I'm pleased to say, will handle multi-company as well as multi-academies. Um, and you can benefit from those good things from there. One of the things you can separate out the trading element from the school, from the academy element, um, and just gives you nice clean data but it's something that we can go for. You don't have to have multiple finance systems uh, if you are uh, sort of, sort of uh, operating a trading arm as well. Um, and yeah, we were engaging with a number of, of dev partners. Um, as Sarah mentioned earlier on, if you want to get involved, you want to be part of our journey, be an early adopter, then please do. Uh, we have a number already, and one of them is Shuish Matt. Um, they're a Matt that's been around since 2013. Uh, and they've given us in, in sort of valuable insight into you know, how their school works or how their schools work. Um, but we can never get enough feedback. So please do join that scheme if, if you want to get onto it. Um, so some of the things you can expect, um, there are some multi-dimensional reporting. Um, data is at the key of this whole event. If you haven't noticed, I'm not gonna go too far into it. You've probably heard enough, but yes, multi being able to pivot data based on academy, based on codes, based on analysis, based on periods, whatever it may be, all there and it's all at your fingertips. Uh, reporting actuals and using forecasting. Um, Janine's mentioned earlier on about budgets coming in and actuals going out. That's something that we can model and, and really help you again with budgeting, tighter budgeting and forecasting for the future as best you can. Um, we're not only just gonna do numbers, uh, me being a, an accountant at heart, I'm quite happy with all the numbers, but I appreciate some of the audiences I sit and deliver data to won't want that. So you can expect graphs, We've seen the BI in previous parts of the system. We're borrowing and using existing functionality that we know our, our, our clients love, uh, and that's gonna find its way into finance as well. And then something to, to sort of, you know, wait for and in anticipation is punching out. Um, punching out to suppliers to gain those all important discounts uh, and Bromcom Matt Finance will have this. Uh, other things of consideration, I've mentioned the non-finance users, that is budget holders, be they premises, IT, uh, faculty heads, teachers, what have you. Um, it all needs a workflow. Uh, and I'm pleased to announce that we have a, a very intricate yet very, very easy to set up workflow. So uh, every order can, be, can find its way onto the system as it should, be properly authorized um, and find its way down to invoice. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's based on a value, on an academy, on a user, on a department, on a code, it could be anything. Um, we have the flexibility to work those in. So any scheme of delegation, and I do mean this, any scheme of delegation in the country will work with our, with our workflow. Uh, little basic things like when, when staff go off, absent, whatever it may be, uh, a, a redundant, a deputy will step in and the authorization flow keeps going on. So there's no bottlenecks, no black holes where orders just fall into and never come out of again. It's seamless and continuous. Uh, and obviously invoices will be scanned on 
and find their way onto the system. So using some of the search functionality you've already seen, you can pull back actuals at the click of a button. Uh, one of the common feedbacks we've got from all of our dev partners, everything I've heard in the last 10 years, is we, we want all of our, uh, when we get to a stage where we don't have non-order purchase invoices and every invoice has a PO. I mean, it's a pipe dream. Where it, I'm not going to mention that illness of unknown origin, but we're never going to get to zero. You're never going to get to zero with your invoices as well. But what we can do is make the, the process so seamless that we can get up to hopefully 99% or more of every single thing that, that is bought by the, by the mat goes through a PO. We don't want non-orders and we don't want them for obvious reasons, but um, with that focus, um, we've created the most intuitive sort of workflow we could. Um, drilling down everywhere to go, um, it's all well and good getting an invoice for X amount and a payment of X, but we wanna know what, where, and who. Why does this exist? Is it relevant? Is it frivolous? All those decisions are there or need to be made based on, on the information. So drilling down is, is key. We've got a GRM process now. Um, and going paperless is, is something that is obviously advantageous for many, many reasons. So that's all built in there as well. And lastly, the analysis can be done by academy, cost center, ledger, code, period, user, whatever you want. Again, it's multidimensional, but analysis is now being built in uh, to our PO process. Uh, last few bits. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment some of the steals of the product. It is going to be available for September. But you can expect dashboards, uh, workflow-based dashboards, finance dashboards, budget dashboards. It really is horses for courses. If I'm a department head, I don't really need to see what the management accounts looks like because it's not going to make any sense to me. But I do want to know where I am in my budget through the year um, based on any number of reasons. Much the same as if I'm a security or admin user of the role. Again, I'm probably not going to care what the... Um, what the balance sheet says and where our assets and reserves live. But I do need to see where the security settings live, where the workflows are. So again, horses for courses, lots of visualization of the data. Um, so you can expect dashboards for sure. I mentioned before the DFE chart of accounts, all 1100 and whatever it is codes, they are there. Um, or you can use our own standard chart of accounts that clocks in at around 120. So it's up to you, the mats who adopt what you wanted to use for codes. Um, and yeah, watch this space for further integration with MIS, giving you what the two most important things that goes on in your establishment, which is young people's education and the finances to pay for it. So those are gonna be brought together. And again, data is gonna be available there. Um, when you log into Matt Finance, this is what you're gonna be met with. Data to start off with. And we can see here that I've just done a salary analysis, um, a budget, um, expenditure versus budget, um, some balance um, uh, reserves sort of uh, graphs. Um, these widgets actually will all be customizable to you as, as at a user level, or you can make them uniform across the mat if you want to. Um, but as I said, they're not just graphs, there is data behind them. And if I was to click onto one of them, I can see the breakdown much the same as you've seen previously with MIS. So here I'm looking at my expenditure by type. These types are analysis fields that live on the codes. And I can see, not surprisingly, salaries are quite high, but I can also see a variance there. If I want to go into a little bit more detail and actually look into the salaries, I can break these down by the job role. So again, it's just it's your data. You've been keying it in. All a finance system is, as we know, it's just a big diary. But now you can actually pull the pull all of your entries out and make sense of them all. Uh, and this is done at a click of a button. Uh, if bar charts aren't your thing, yep, there's a there's the balance sheet, which will just show you uh, where you are in year compared to your beginning position. Uh, yeah, if bar charts aren't your thing, maybe a line graph um, is, is something that will take you like ah, you see when you're a slide out. Uh, yeah, here's just another example of staggered uh, sort of bar charts. Um, but there we go. There's a line graph. So I've got my budget in there. That's representative of the blue line. The orange line represents my actuals. We can hold multiple budgets in Bromcom. So that blue line might be have a gray or green, whatever whatever color you want. But you can see your, your fixed budget versus your revised budget, second budget, working budget, whatever they may be. Um, and we can pull a forecast out as well. And again, it's not just a line graph. There's data underneath it. And lastly, if line graphs and bar charts aren't your thing, why not try a donut? I mean, the idea what I'm trying to get here is it's your information at your fingertips. You can do what you like with it. Um, but yeah, we can we can paint the data uh, in any which way we want. And here is just a, an aged creditors or debtors report underneath. So I believe 
that's about it. Oh, no, no, we've got more. Sorry. Um, yeah, so here's kind of how the screen looks. So Ginny showed you all those colorful boxes there. We've uh, um, streamlined all of that. Um, under the finance menu option on the left, which you're familiar with if you uh, use our MIS, um, new entries, inquiries, reports, procurement, um, security settings, all those sort of bits and bobs are there. But it's slimline now so that we can just create a new entry uh, and in we go. And just to show you how sort of intuitive the system is, here is a, a non-order purchase invoice. I said we don't want them, so we may as well look at it as part of a demo. Um, we've got our supplier on the left, our site on the right, our academy. Basic details, you know, totals, invoice numbers, and then you just add the lines in along the bottom. Uh, the next screen you're about to see is, an in, uh, is a receipt of income, and you can see we're now we're picking instead of supplier, it's the bank, but on the right, it's the site. The lines are the same. Everything's the same. It's designed this way so you can onboard new members of the finance team very quickly on the system. One of the daunting things of any new job role is using their new systems, but ours is very easy. And if we were to go back now to the invoice, just to sort of hammer home this point, uh, we can see that it's it's all the same. So you can expect that whether it be a journal, a credit note, or anything else. And I think that's time. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed the event. If you're interested in any of the products or anything that you've seen here, please do get in touch with one of the members of the team. I'm going to hand you back to Sarah now, and thank you for listening. Great. Thanks ever so much, Martin. Um, I was about to say we've managed to get all the way through the presentation without any technical hitches whatsoever, which is a uh, which is great. But Janine, I see that you're still muted. I don't know if we can unmute you if you um, needed yeah. to add anything. No, I'm no, I'm fine. Thank you. That's great. Lovely. At least we, we got there to, to, to hear you at the end. So thanks very much. Um, again, looking in the chat, I don't think we've picked up anything at all um, that we've not already answered. So um, as Martin just said, it's really difficult standing between a presentation and everybody disappearing off for lunch. So with that, I suppose it, it just falls to me to, to thank Janine and Martin, uh, particularly uh, for that session. Um, I know it's not always easy having that, as we said, that, that uh, graveyard shift before anybody disappears off. Um, thank you all once again to everybody who's joined us uh, for today, but especially so to our guest speakers. So to Derek, to Dave and to Lauren uh, for taking their time out of their really busy schedules. I know it's not easy to find time, not just to present today, but also the preparation and the thoughtfulness that goes into them saying what they, they have said today. Um, but I'm sure we all appreciate hearing their direct experiences, the thoughts, strategic plans and, and so on. So as I said at the beginning, whether you're an existing Broncom user, um, old or new, or whether you're a trust that's just starting to explore the market for the very first time, I'm really hoping that each and every one of you have, uh, are taking something away today and have found one of the sessions or more uh, interesting and useful. Uh, before we end though, I just want you uh, to invite you to give us some feedback and at, at Bromcom we are always interested in hearing your feedback. Um, it's the only way that we can improve whether it's for um, running a session like this or the, the product itself unless we know we, we can't improve. So please do let us know if you found it it useful. If there's something that you think you'd like us to include for the next event, again, that would be really helpful. Um, under the event tab alongside the chat, there are a couple of polls that would be helpful again before people disappear, just to add um, their comments or their, their um, responses into that as well. Um, and also to follow us, uh, follow us and our guest speakers on LinkedIn or Twitter as well or facebook of course um, it allows you to keep in touch with us see what we're up to uh, details of the next event um, so yeah i'll invite you as dan's got on the screen there the, the links to the various social media channels but finally um, a thank you to everybody who's taken part today i know doing a virtual event is not quite the same as a an actual event uh, but we hope that it's um 
it's been a, a pretty good uh, stunt double for you all. And we look forward to um, sharing a save the date on a physical session. Uh, fingers crossed and a, a COVID world allowing back in uh, 2022. So thanks ever so much to all of you. Thank you. Take care.